Oh, how many? I guess I'll start. Good. Ah. Can everybody hear me okay? Wow, that's really good too. Great. Okay. Ah. So just um, if you haven't yet, just uh, get yourself in the sitting posture that you want to um, settle in with for the sitting. Last night I was talking about um, a like a spiritual ecology of being. A, uh, it's like a spiritual recognition of the ecosystem we breathe in together. So when we become aware of our whole body right now sitting. There's like a, an amazing ecosystem that there is a way we tend to think of inside and outside. But as we, as we settle in with our awareness inside our body, inside the skin, or our awareness just outside the body, around the edges. As you start to receive the body sensations directly, not through the thought process, we start to understand that the breath, for example, <clears throat> it's coming and going by itself. We don't have to make it happen. The body sensations are coming and going by themselves. We don't have to make them happen. And understanding that we don't have to make anything happen allows for a kind of deeper relaxation, quiet, settling in. So of course there will be thoughts about the body sensations, breath, sound. And you include the thinking in the ecosystem. But you include the thinking just like clouds going through the sky or leaves blowing on a tree. They're coming and going by themselves just like the breath. So there's like sound sensations, body sensations, thought sensations. So we, we again find through this understanding, we find that ease of well being that we don't have to control or manipulate or fix. There's nothing we have to do with what's appearing, except the big thing is that we are not asleep. We're noticing what's happening. We're receiving the information of life itself that isn't ours not me or I or mine. So we can let our attention settle into our hands.
and experience life directly receiving these effervescent, ever-changing sensations. And notice them change. They're alive. They're moving the sensation. And check to see if you experience your hands mostly visually. It's not wrong or bad. It's more just to, to see if you can notice the visual image as a thought. That comes and goes. It's a memory. Just let it, let the visual images always just come and go, but then see if you can make space for letting the attention settle in and really, even for a few seconds, connect with just what's emerging wordlessly. And sometimes we offer different words rather than hand as a way to explore such as warmth. And if it changed to coolness or if it just kind of shifts a little bit in different warm, warm nuances. tingling, heaviness, aspects of shifting our understanding of our body as more a process of change. Earth, earth, air, fire, water in this dynamic play of life, of aliveness. And we can learn to relate to all that appears this way. Sounds, for example, It's an energy field of an ecology of being. No me, no you, no inside, outside. So say there's a car or a bird or your stomach gurgling. It's a very similar process of noticing any often visual images or memories appearing, questions, what kind of car, what kind of bird versus at times noticing the question, the thoughts about the experience and then making space for Connecting the attention with a direct experience. Hearing, hearing. Not I am hearing, just hearing's happening. Receiving vibration, texture, the aliveness of sound as it's moving so quickly. Breath, 
we all share <clears throat> with <clears throat> all beings, breathing beings. receiving the life of breathing itself like waves at the sea, swells coming in and passing. And if you feel the breath needs to be a certain way, just notice that in this practice, we, if the breath is shallow, we let it be shallow. You're deep, tight, hard, soft. Just let it be. You just let it be just as it is. Without getting involved in the commentary about it. It's just simply commentary. We don't have to act on it. So you just start letting the need to fix or control, you let that be part of the practice. But just letting it come and go like the breath or sound, it's just controlling. <clears throat> you don't have to do anything with it. You might notice any corresponding physical sensations in your body. Often we tighten up around something like hardness or burning, throbbing, grief, sadness, anger. Just noticing that resistance, noticing if you can as physical sensations and let the resistance be okay. Let it come and go. It's not mine. We're just trying to protect ourselves. Finding that at times more <clears throat> serene immersion in the aliveness of being itself.
Just noticing the quality of your, your awareness itself right now. With whatever is happening. Sleepiness or restless, bored, peaceful, compassionate. Just with whatever's happening, see if you can find a quiet connection with that experience. And notice if you can bring any tenderness or care or kindness with whether there's a sound or a sight or a smell or a taste or a touch, body sensation, thought, emotion, pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. Just see if you can connect with kindness, care, or just that quiet, tender connection. Today, we have time for a few questions. And um, the idea would be that you would um, find the little blue hand to raise your hand. And Darine, I don't know if you can help us figure that out. Or if you can't. That's fine too. We can just have people raise their hand and unmute. So what do you think? Perhaps just raise their hand clearly because <laughs> I don't find a bot the, the blue button myself. Yeah. I learned it once. <laughs> Wait a minute. No. Okay. Okay. It's okay. Oh, Roberta's trying to tell us under what? More? Under more, it says what? Breakout rooms live on Facebook. Facebook. In participants. In participants. In participants list. All right, I got it. I got it. If you go to in participants. More? Is there more there? <laughs> yes. If you go to participants and then you go down, there's yes, no, go slower, go faster, more, and you press on more, and there's a little blue hand that, like, like that little thing, and you press on that. Like, I'll do it. Oh, it didn't work. <laughs> Darina, it didn't work. Maybe because well. you're a host. Oh, right. Um, oh, it Ava. Ava, can you, you want to try? Do you have a little blue hand? Yes. Ah, 
Yes, this is so exciting. Okay, you can tell I'm a genius at this. <laughs> Close to genius. So um, do you wanna ask a question or are you just showing us how to do it? <laughs> No, yes. Can can you unmute her, Darine? I just wanted to show you guys. Okay. Thanks, Ava. Okay, so anyone have a question this morning? Not through chat. We can't that's way beyond our capacity. <laughs> Oh, okay, nobody. Okay, Victor, Victor, you're waving. Is that a question? Yes. Okay. Hi. Just um, some guidance on how to meet the, the quivering of fear in that silent space and um, how to the meet- what, the, can, the what fear? Quivering of fear. Okay, okay. A okay. deep, deep fear, fear coming up in the sits, um, trying to I, I not meet it like right on directly or trying to be mm, bring tenderness to it like it's it's tricky yeah well what happens when you do bring your attention to it attention gets drawn right into the physical feeling uh-huh or um i try to bring tenderness to it and just uh not get involved which is which is quite delicate and if you get to if you get to that point where you're you're not involved where is your attention it's sort of um in a space of resistance resisting the fear <clears throat> wanting to, wanting it to go away and um, how how are you with respecting that it's just it's really delicate it's really hard to um be not involved and neutral and even ah. just welcoming uh, of oh, the interesting food. this has been a process that you know i'm i'm actually quite excited that you're in this place this is exciting and very um new in terms of um uh, how, how do you relate to neutral It it, 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 it it doesn't feel, it feels like a wanting serenity. Like it, it's a wanting. And then I can put the attention on the wanting as opposed to the aversion to the, to the fear. Um, and then if mine can creep in and I catch thoughts and, and dismiss them, some of them are quite harsh, but they're playing in that field of um, trying to allow the strong feelings of um, fear and um, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna try um, one one uh, angle again. Is like you mentioned the word neutral, right? Where is it? I I don't I don't know if I can find neutral. I find wanting uh -huh. or wanting it to be away or efforting okay. to, to bring tenderness. Okay. 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 Um, yeah. Let me just give me a sec. Um, I think the two places I'd like you to play around with the next couple of days is um, accepting resistance rather than trying to get to the fear or the physical sensations of the fear just to really, this is hard. This is really hard. This is slippery. That's why I'm playing with where's the neutral because there's something happening. It's like a cluster of things that happen like the, the fear, the resistance, the wanting, right? Like there's a lot happening. And um, I think the first place that happens is that resistance. And it's very slippery when it's a karmic knot. It's like, it's so slippery. It's that's what I'm finding. Something's very slippery. Then you slip off into the wanting the serenity. And it's like, um, 
a true neutral place would be like the breath uh, if there there wasn't fear in the body there but it, it's like just playing it's delicate but you can do this you can go to sound you can open your eyes you can go back to resistance you can go to sound you can open your eyes you can go back to resistance but it's probably going to slip right out and then uh, because resistance is slippery here and so what happens when you slip on ice <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, you you kind of hit hard, right? You fall on the ice, you slip. And then I want you to see if you can find something else that's going to hold your attention, probably something pleasant, even if you have to stand up and even if you have to stop sitting at that point and go outside. Um, uh, this is very exciting and new and um, a big step. It's um, It's hard to connect with pleasant flowers it's there's lovely things out there but i the fear kind of is there and i can pour my concentration onto the breath and just feel the waves of breath just pouring concentration there that sounds pretty good (laughs) okay good see what happens hey yeah good very good yeah Happy, happy, happy. I know it's not easy. I'm not, I'm not exciting. It's not exciting how hard it is. I'm, I'm just saying it's good where you are. Yeah, great. Glad you asked. Okay, okay. Um, Molly has her hand up. Holly. Where are you, Holly? Molly. Okay. Molly. Okay, Molly, I know where you are. Okay. There you are. Okay, great. Did you unmute yourself? Is there an unmute? Ah, there you are. Yep. Oh, no. Hmm. I should learn. Darine, can you try unmuting everybody for a sec? Including yourself. Do you want me to do I have a mute all. I could try pressing it and seeing what happens, but that might be a drag, but we'll just... Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Great. I'm glad I didn't do that. <laughs> okay, good. I didn't touch that button. Okay, great. Um, so my question is around the issue of not listening to the news mm-hmm. during this. It feels much more unsettling to not listen. Mm-hmm. Um, that the idea of going 10 days and then hearing all the news <laughs> at one time, or just, um, it feels like I could almost go deeper if I listen a little. Yeah. Listen. I think that um, that's a very good question. Um, I think each person has to uh, find their way of regulating here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that I have a number of, um, dear friends, students that have gotten so anxious that they can't sleep and they had to go to the doctor and get sleeping pills because of the listening to the news. So I think my sense of getting a break is um, that when there's a lot of anxiety in hearing the news, it's creating a voltage, a voltage of anxiety that we're not even aware of. But that's what I was trying to say last night when I gave the talk that there's a kind of static that a lot of us are getting addicted to. It's like we're grounding through the news. It's because if you wait too long, it's too hard to hear it five days later. I I understand that. I really understand that. And um, I think it depends on the type you are. So I am more of a fear type. So 
I did a, I was trying to do a retreat through the whole lockdown. I don't, you remember that, right, Molly? Yeah. That I, and uh, there was a certain point where I hit the same place you did, where it was like, wow, I, I don't think I can come out of retreat a month from now and deal with this. Now, that's a fear. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that, that that, I think what I want you to play with is like that, see if you can be with that unsettled feeling sometime as a practice but i'm not saying don't don't do with a fear with a fear type you have to be careful of pushing to the point where you can't go deep because you can't be with that unsettled feeling and you said it really well listen to yourself and, reg and regulate see if you can regulate this and then if you go too far you know take less mm -hmm. but and I'm not I'm not saying don't do it I'm just saying I you know again I know you very well and I know you're more of that on that fear type and um, they need to regulate differently than if you're a deluded type or a greedy type. It's a different kind of re regulation. And, and I think what would be really interesting is to pay attention to voltage itself. Anxiety has a voltage to it. And, yeah. and to start um, being, if you can be interested in the voltage. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, Thank great. You. Yeah. Thanks. Great. I think that might be it. Um, these are great questions. Uh, Julie, one more. Yeah, that's it. Oh, there I am. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Um, Hi. It's really good to be here uh, with, with everybody. Um, I feel like I keep asking this question, so there must be something I'm trying to figure out in it all. I feel like um, when I was just sitting this last sit, um, I realized that I'm really uh, judging myself for how I'm practicing. Um, when, I, when I'm sitting and doing the group sits, I'm able to practice, um, like I'm able to meditate um, and then as soon as I'm not, I'm able to be like, I'm mindful. Um, and when I direct myself to be mindful, I notice I'm actually present. I'm very mindful. I'm aware of my feet, but I'm doing all these things. Like anyways, I feel like I'm meditating very light. It feels very light. Right. So I go for a walk and I, you know, make a meal or I, you know what I mean? I do different chores, but it feels like, that's where I'm at. That's the truth of where I'm at. So there's part of me that wants to take ownership of trying to figure out what I actually need to regulate my system right now and the best way to practice. And then there's part of me that has all these judgments about, you know, like I know how I used to practice and who I used to be when I meditated and I'm not that person anymore. And, or today, this moment right now. And um, so I have all these judgments and I'm worried that I'm just that I'm practicing, that I'm reinforcing bad habits or, mm -hmm. so I think I keep asking you this question, like since right. you've no, been online, <clears throat> I keep asking it over and over again. And there's something, cause you're talking about, we're trying to, you're trying to be in the unconditioned place. And then, so when I'm doing things lightly, I feel like I'm going back into the conditioned place rather right. than, you know, and so then I'm, you know, am I just creating this big kind of tug of war? around how I'm practicing. Well, I have a few suggestions and we can see how it goes. For the first three days of the retreat, I wouldn't um, bear down too hard. I learned um, way back in my early practice, the mind cannot deepen unless it's relaxed. And that's like really important. And, and so when we're home trying to practice, it's, um, much harder for most people to do the sit walk sit walk sit walk in fact it can it can backfire on some people by making it harder to go deeper because it's too hard and so everyone needs to take the first few days to kind of 
remember that each retreat is new and to f to start listening and be careful of the judgment you know because um i said last night light concentration can actually be deep but we don't recognize it and and it it's we we judge it and then the judging makes it um unrelaxed uh, so learning how to be mindful while walking through your house is probably much harder than anything else you can do. Uh, really, I want you guys to hear this. I know I have the problem every day. How do you be mindful in your house? Well, you know, you're on automatic pilot. You know, it, 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 the deep, the depth of the conditioning to not be mindful while you're going in the bathroom and brushing your teeth. It's like you can do it on a retreat far easier than in your home. It's just really a big shift. And it's like a COVID shift. Um, it's like awesome, the, the opportunity, but I would also fall back on your strength so that when you have more energy, do more formal practice. And most people have a morning or an afternoon or an evening where they have more energy. Play to that strength, get a little more, let, uh, put, put the concentration on a little more, the gas on a little more. And then when you're tired, you need to do the light concentration or your system's going to buck this. Going for a walk is good practice. Making a meal is good practice. That's what this is good for is cutting through our idea that the, in, you know, that deep practice isn't when we're cooking. I gave a talk on how to be mindful doing dishes last Sunday at the Sunday sitting. And I sort of look at people and I feel like they're looking at me like I'm crazy. I mean it. You can get fully enlightened being sleepy. You can get fully enlightened doing the dishes. It's all about the quality of the awareness. Good old Ananda, the Buddha's assistant for the whole life of the Buddha, got fully enlightened laying down to go to sleep. Big important lessons. It, it, every moment this would be uh, the truth is that the truth is here every moment. It can't be true otherwise. You can't have a false moment 10, 10 moments from now. Every moment is true. The unconditioned awareness, all you need is inside you. It's already there. You can't pretend that two moments from now, all you need isn't there. That's not the truth. The truth is that we can drop in any moment to compassion or to, you call it up, or to equanimity. Or it's like, but it's like we have to respect all the resistance, the obstacles. And at home, um, man, it's a very different practice. And I think, Julie, you're doing well. I think that you, just what you described sounds good, other than all the um, believing all the doubt and the judgment. And of course, a lot of doubt comes up the first few days on self-retreat. You know, My favorite is that I always, I always get into this place where I have to repaint my house, you know, because it, it, it does need repainting, right? But it's like, I'll like, I'll finally have the time, right? Or whatever, you know, it's like, I didn't clean out that thing. And the, uh, there's so much to do that I haven't done. And then I'll get into like, well, I can't be mindful right now. I might as well clean out the closet. That's my, there's a lot of things like that. And man, it takes a lot of, the first word of this retreat renunciation is a form of kindness and it's like that kindness for ourselves to go at actually no i'm gonna um go outside and walk maybe it's you take a walk and you learn to be being aware of hearing as you walk and you're aware of seeing as you walk and the bottom of your feet as you walk right it's like and um that's enough for now but just for now it's walking time i hope for most of you and that like you can do it in whatever way you can, inside the hallway, out on the driveway or the sidewalk, or, you know, we're, we're all in different places. Um, maybe go for a walk, but some people it's probably two in the morning. You know, we all have different time zones here. I can see you in I Todd and Bridget, you're in the dark, right? Yeah, it's probably five hours earlier, right? Yeah, for me, so. 
Wow, you guys. Five. Yeah, you're 5 a.m. See? Wow. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks for getting up. <laughs> yeah, so um, enjoy this time. And the next sitting, the ta Dhamma talk will be at 2 o'clock our time, 5 California time, 6 Darine's time, 8, eight, eight uh, East Coast time. That's as far as I can go. <laughs> So um, I think everyone just take time to, you know, look at each other and feel the support of each other. Enjoy any resistance that's happening. <laughs> Part of it all. We only find what acceptance is through being interested in, it, in resistance. See you for the Dhamma talk. Thank you, Stephen, Darine, everybody. <laughs> Amazing me 